Here we send a finite train of sine waves to the right. During the time while the two waves are superposed, we see a standing wave. The particles oscillate with varying amplitudes, either exactly in or exactly out of phase. But the wave is going nowhere. That's why we call it a standing wave. In the animation, we can see travelling waves going to the left and to the right, as well as their superposition, a standing wave. Let's do the maths. Here are the animations and the expressions for a sine wave going to the right and one going to the left that is inverted at the boundary. We'll also need this trigonometric identity. Substituting a equals kx and b equals omega t gives this expression. Conveniently, two terms cancel and the others are equal, so the sum of the travelling waves to the left and the right is y equals 2a sine kx cos omega t. Note that kx and omega t do not occur in the form kx plus or minus omega t. So this is not a travelling wave. At all points x, the points oscillate proportional to cos omega t, so they are all simple harmonic motion either in phase or 180 degrees out of phase depending on whether sine kx is positive or negative. The amplitude of their simple harmonic motion varies with position as 2a sine kx. The wave number k equals 2 pi on lambda. Where sine kx equals 0 there is no displacement. This is called a displacement node. Where sine kx equals plus or minus 1, it's an antinode. The zeros in the sine function are separated by pi, so nodes are separated by half a wavelength. So are antinodes. Both the left and right going waves are solutions to the wave equation. So, because the wave equation is linear, the standing wave must also be a solution. You can check that by substitution.